Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use action mappings to switch between characters in game. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. For this video, I'm starting off at the end of our advanced character controller series. So if you're in need of a character controller, I'll provide the link of that playlist in the description below. However, if you already have your own character controller, this will still work. You don't need any of that prior code for this tutorial. To go ahead and begin, I'm going to add a new action mapping. So I'm going to go up to edit, project settings, go down to input and add a action mapping. I'm going to call this switch as this will be the mapping that we're using to switch from player A to player B and I'm going to map it to my tab button. And now we can go ahead and get out of our project settings and open up my character script. We want to go over to the header and we're going to begin by adding a function and a property. My function is going to be void and I'm just going to call it switch character. Now we're going to go ahead and create our property. We want this property to be edit anywhere so that way we can assign the property inside our details panel and we're going to give it a category of possession. The category just creates a section within our details panel so that way we can better organize our things in our details panel as well as finding things easier. And this property is going to be a pointer to a my character and we're going to call this other character. And the reason we have this property as edit anywhere is so that in the details panel, we can assign the other character in the scene as the other character pointer inside the script. And that's all we're going to be doing in the header. So we can go ahead and go over to the CPP. And the first thing we're going to be doing in here is adding a new input component. So we're going to do input component and it was an action. So we're going to do bind action. And this is the mapping name that we put inside our project setting. So we named it switch. If you named your something else, just make sure that this string is the exact string that you put inside your project settings. And then we want this action to be called anytime we press this mapping. So we're going to do IE pressed. And we're binding it to this. And the function that we're binding to this is a my character switch character. And so to reiterate, this line of code is saying take the mapping of switch, bind this function of switch character, and have this function called whenever the mapping is pressed. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and create our function. And so it's going to be void a my character, switch character. And the first thing we want to do inside this function is make sure that our other character exists so that way we don't get any null errors if we forget to assign that other character inside our details panel. So we're going to do if other character. And then we also want to make sure that our controller exists. Our controller keeps track of which character is currently possessed and which one is using inputs. So we're going to use get controller in order to determine if that controller is not null. And after we've determined that neither of those statements are null, we want to go ahead and do a controller pointer, and we're just going to call it temp, and we're going to get controller. And again, this get controller allows us to determine which character is currently possessed, and it tells us from which character we're currently listening to inputs. And so the reason we need to have a temp value of it is because we're going to end up unpossessing the current character that is the controller, which will then make that controller null, but we want to then possess the other character, and so we don't want to have a null controller. So we're saving reference to this controller before we unpossess the character, so that way we can still access the get controller once we're repossessing the other player. And so before we do all that, we want to make sure that we did successfully get that controller and that temp is not null. And so after we've determined that our temp is pointing to our controller, we can go ahead and take that controller and unpossess our current character and then take the same controller and possess the other character.
and that's all the coding that we're going to be doing. So just to reiterate, this function is making sure that our other character is not null and that we didn't forget to assign it inside the details panel. And it's checking that we currently have a controller that has possession of a character and is checking those inputs. From there, we take that controller and temporarily assign it to a pointer. We make sure that that pointer has successfully gotten that controller. Then we unpossess the current character from that controller and then take that same controller and possess the other character to it. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go back to the scene and compile. And now that that compile is complete, we're gonna go ahead and drag a second character into the scene. I'm gonna scoot this one over. We're going to rotate this one so it's facing the same way as the other player. And then you want to make sure that on the player that you want to start as possessed, that it auto possesses player zero and that your player that you don't want to start as possessed is disabled for auto-possess. We also want to go to our possession category that we created and assign the other player. This is character one, so I'm assigning my character as the other character. And then we go to my character and do the opposite for that one. We can go ahead and test and play now. And so as you can see, if I click tab, it switches over to the other character. And if I click tab again, it switches right back. So as a recap, we used input components to switch possession of our current character. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We do videos on YouTube Wednesday and Saturday. We also stream games on Twitch Monday through Wednesday, so if that interests you, be sure to check that out. We've also created an asset pack on Unity of toy models, and we've created a phone app on the Google Play Store called Blast Off. If you would like to support us in any of those ways, the links for all of those things will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.